Hello sunshine and welcome back to the channel where today we will be doing or starting a new project and that new project is going to be Lore of the Silver Hand in ink for the month of April. I like to do these process videos because it shows you that art is an actual process. We start with scribbles and we take it somewhere. So today we're going to be starting the new project, Lore of the Silver Hand in Ink, a character I created, an original character who was based on the wandering warrior, wandering swordsman motif genre. I've always liked that, and I wanted to make a character in that vein, something that I can test out my own skills against. And I am terrible at inks, but here we have a full range of gesture sketches, little doodles trying to get an idea of the character. We have Lore of the Silver Hand. He is a wandering swordsman, an ex-imperial army man. He's been a mercenary, and now he is the man death has rejected. He has a hand that is impenetrable. It is resistant to burning, stabbing, all of that. And this is because he was cursed by a unicorn and he has taken that unicorn's horn after he has murdered the thing. He is, I wouldn't say a hero, but I wouldn't say a villain. He is a man who wanders. And I'm doing these brief illustration, well, just drawing sketches to figure out what the character is. Whenever you make a character, you have to put him through his paces to see what the character looks like. Like taking it from your mind and putting it onto paper and then trying to figure out what you do like and what you don't like. So this is a, a piece that I like, the idea on paper. Wandering, he has his backpack, has a sword, he has the unicorn horn that he also uses as sort of stabbing weapon and he just wanders the world because he is a fugitive he is a defector of the empire imperial army and he said he will serve no one else he will be his own man from now on but since the encounter with the unicorn that he slayed his left arm highly resistant to damage it's more like steel but for this I, these are my touch, my touchstones for Lord of the Silver Hand. Conan is a very popular character and a, a great example of the wandering adventurer, wandering swordsman, barbarian type who goes on advent adventures throughout the land. And he has been drawn by many great artists throughout the years. Uh, Frank Frazetta, Mark Schultz, Steve Buscema, a lot of artists have gone into the look and the adventures of Conan. And this is more or less what I'd like to go for, a black and white inking style. But also we have Geralt of Rivia, the Witcher, and another man who goes across the land slaying monsters but he has two swords, one silver for monsters and one for human beings because he encounters all types of monsters. And I've always liked this, this character. I've read all the books, an excellent character. The game is fantastic. Witcher 3, amazing. So he was another one that I added to this, this pantheon of what I would like for my character. And also, this is Vampire Hunter D, done by the artist Yoshitaka Amano uh, of Final Fantasy. I think that's where he's most known, his artwork. But I love his illustrations for the character of Vampire Hunter D. And I think he's a vampire who's like half human, half vampire. And he also goes around on a, is it a robotic steed or a... He has a horse and he travels the land and he fights monsters. He takes out other 
evil vampires. And I like the inking style. This is loose, looser than say a traditional Conan, but I like the energy of this. So these are the touchstones for Lord of the Silver. Right. And so again, I started with just basic small little doodles to try to get what a wandering swordsman would do. Right? How would he look? Because he wanders around, his hair would be unkempt, his attire is flexible, but he's you know gonna be walking, so that's exerting energy. He has a backpack, he takes his weapons because he doesn't know what he'll encounter in this mythical world. And so yeah, these are exploratory and we'll be doing more of this today. So what is the level to give an example of what I'm going for? This is Pepe Larraz. Pepe Larraz uh, is a Spanish comic artist. He's really good. I like his work on the X-Men. I read a lot of X-Men comics. And this is his version of Conan. But this is the inking. Right, this is what I'll be doing for the month. This is what I'm going for. I want to do lore and ink it to the best of my ability to get somewhere approaching this. And what I like about, you know, once I find an artist doing something that I like, I take a look at their work and see how I can improve my own art. And I try to get as many steps because again, art is a process. Art has steps to get to a final image. So in this, we have Conan, the sketch, well, the drawing is fairly tight. I'm sure there was a, a more preliminary sketch to get to this, but sometimes you gotta go with what you see. But to that, to this, um, this is what we're aiming for. For the month of April, this is where I'm, where I'm trying to get to. Another artist is Mark Schultz, a great illustrator. And he also, a Conan, and I like how this has notation on right, the size of the image. Right, he has some, some notes. And I think this is, he's broken it down because it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a book cover. I think that's what this is for. So you have the front, you have the spine, and then you have the back. And I like how he broke that down, right? So you can see, you have to compose things depending on you know, how it's going to be formatted. Uh, this, this is a beautiful image. And this, look at that. This is amazing. And you got your darkest darks. You got the, the white, but also framing all of this detail and all these characters. So for mine, I want an action pose with probably my character fighting off something. I have no idea what that something is, but we'll figure that out today. This is Mark Schultz. Amazing right here. All right, and of course, Frank Frazetta. An amazing artist, amazing. I think this is for, what was this for? Weird science slash fantasy. Weird science slash fantasy. I think this was like a cover for that. But we have a composition. We got some space on the top. We have the action. Action coming down. It's, there's this sort of pinwheel action where this flows, this flows, and this flows. We have this guy getting booted off. Right, there's all this dynamic action. And we have the ink right here. Look at that, that's fantastic. And my inking is nowhere close to, but this is what we're aiming for. And sometimes you gotta go out 
of your comfort zone. You have to find inspiration and things that you're that you can improve in and go for it. So I don't know how close I can get as my first time trying something like this. But hey, you got to go for it, right? You got to start somewhere. We'll see where we're at at the end. I'll try to throw every trick I know at it and see where we get, how far we get. And then we'll do a postmortem and then move on to the next. Because art is a process. Art is a process. So let's get to work. Writing down some notes. So we'll call it lore, ink, project. Uh, action mm, slash fight uh, multi figure. Let's see. Ink. And so it's going to be 11 by 17. 11 by 17. And so we can play with, you know, whether it's going to be horizontal or vertical. Hmm. And of course, I always try to start with some loose ideas. So as a swordsman, you figure he's going to have a sword fight. Is it bandits? I don't know. Is it... Uh, could he be mid-fight? You know, and what would the pose be? Uh, you know, holding off somebody who's got maybe a knife. Or, and he has his sword hand. Could have already got somebody. And you know, in the beginning, it doesn't really matter. Stick figures <laughs> will do until you have some sort of better idea. Say another guy. He's grabbed onto his arm. He's got this guy bending away from him. Uh, maybe another guy's jumping on him from above. And he also has a knife. So maybe it's a bandit attack. He's wandering the world and he's been attacked by four bandits. Uh, what else? He could be. He could be slashing this way. He's got his foot on somebody's back and they're on the ground. Uh, 
And again, like the Frazetta piece, a guy could be flying away from him. There could be another guy who's, I don't know, this is gruesome. So if you don't like gruesomeness, maybe, <laughs> maybe this one isn't the one to watch, but he's, he's got his, let's say he, he's been injured in the throat area and he's clutching his throat. Right, as he's, uh, where's the fourth guy? The fourth guy could be still on his back and he's got the knife. You never want a bandit this close to you, but hey, sometimes craziness happens in the wilds. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? Mm. In the end, you can take bits and pieces of different things that you like, don't like. But in this, I, this phase, we're just ideation, right? This is just, this is just, This is just us going for it. Hmm. What else? He could, you know, like in the old samurai flicks where they, they do the, right, he's already gone through them. And he's All right, and then so my sword hand is back here. I got a sword. And this arm maybe. Something like this. Right, so then this is his back arm, his right arm. And he's got this sword. And then the the people in the background have just been slashed. Right, so they're all like, ugh. This guy has been, this guy, his head is already flying, right? And the body is, <laughs> uh, I can't believe I'm doing this on him, <laughs> right? This guy is falling sideways without a head. This guy got hit in the mid right, with such force that it's knocking him back. And another guy, let's say he ducked down before impact and he's like covering, he's covering his, his eyes, face or whatever and maybe he's looking back at our hero. If you can call him that, I don't know. I kind of like that. Although it doesn't have quite the dynamism of people just surrounding our hero. And this would definitely have to be in a hor horizontal pose. This one could be vertical, another horizontal. 
now let's think about let's think about right if the basic shapes of composition like you can have a triangle and figures will be in each of these or it could you know at the end of the day This guy is trying to reach down for you. I don't know why they all have knives. And there had to be something around this area. I don't know what. All right, and this is chicken scratch. Even I sometimes can't can't tell what's going on and this is my own drawing so maybe a giant hmm that would be humanoid attack of the giants but that changes you know from bandits to giants different that would most likely be a uh, vertical but let's explore that let's say there is a a giant I don't even know what this giant looked like and he's taken slightly off off balance I'm not sure exactly what his left was doing. Could he be grabbing his sword? Like, what the heck? Like, how did you get behind me? And the giant has a his hands just about to, to grab him. Hmm. But it doesn't fulfill the multiple attackers, unless it's a group of giants, but what would a group of giants be doing? I think I'll keep it to humanoid, well, smaller human that can attack in mass. So we just eliminated something, so that's good. Hmm. Can we do anything with a circle? Hmm. We could. Like we could have our hero in the center of the circle, let's say he's slashing down. Let's say, what is his other arm doing? And say a guy is doing, like catapulted over him. He's like, no, sir, get off me. And he's slashing this guy off. And let's say he has one foot on another bandit. And this band is looking up. But whatever way, let's say this hand is empty. I don't know. 
you can t see that my my I'm just doing chicken scratches right now because we have no definite so one foot is on the guy they used to do this a lot in uh, European sculptures it's like some dude would be standing on a dude <laughs> or a monster or a dragon or something so yeah he's got Right, but everything would be in a concentric circle around around our hero. So this guy's about to get oh he could be say his head is jerked back because he's hitting upwards. So that's something, right? We did, we did something. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll call it, we'll call this right now. We'll think about it. Try to come up with some other, other ideas and we'll probably work out. So we did a triangle, kind of, sort of, a circle. Next we can do a, Maybe a, a box or a rectangle. Try to think about composition or something. I still think this is cool. But not today. Not this time. We'll, we'll save this in the bank. I kind of like this guy. <laughs> that is, it's terrible. Trey, you're terrible. But I, I like, I like that. So yes, you can take bits and pieces from different things that you like. But, you know, the ideation phase is very important. And I like to take some time with it to work out more concepts before I don't know what we're going to do. So yeah, and I'll see you next time.